Good morning, everyone. So uh, today's meeting, we are going to kick off with some, uh, an overview from Holly on the fiscal update for the county, and then we'll move into debt. Then we're going to talk about um, capital and debt, and then we'll start to move into a discussion around recommendations. Um, I just wanted to kick off the meeting and, and say um, I think I've really appreciated the ability to be on the Spending Affordability Committee for a number of years now and have conversations. Um, because, you know, we are citizens uh, in Howard County who get the opportunity to sit here and have conversations. Um, and I think as members of the committee, if we want to have conversations with the committee, we should have them in the committee room. Um, we're all here, we have the ability, we have seats at the table, we should have that conversation here um, and, and do that. We spent the past uh, number of weeks going over a lot of information, so it's been time for people to give us information so that we can bring that in, and it's a lot of information we've had to bring in, so we haven't had as much time maybe to have conversations. Um, but today we'll start that ability to have some conversations. Um, and after we get through the two presentations, I'll go over for everybody again what the charges of the committee are. Um, they're very clear. Um, they're not very, uh, you know, it's, it's not very gray into what we need to do. Um, and uh, we'll have that conversation, go over that, and then we'll start to talk about the recommendations that we want to, uh, to put into the report. Uh, I'm, I've been um, thinking about the report writing. That's something that I'm going to be um, working on again this year and inviting a smaller group of people to help me work through that. We're going to kick that off next Wednesday morning, so next Wednesday morning is not a full committee meeting. Um, and then I will uh, reach out to those people for that group and we will set up a schedule to work through that to try to get a report back to this committee um, the week of the 24th um, so that they have something to review and talk about and we'll probably do a a meeting to go over those results, but today's the day to have conversations and talk about things um, that we've all been thinking, but I would ask that everybody, please, if you have an opinion, let's let's have the conversation in this room, because we are all members of this committee. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so in February, as a big fan, we're going to focus on the conclusion recommendation of the committee um, now that we have a lot of information. Today, I'm going to go over um, basically the fiscal update based on where we are, uh, based on what we know at this point. On the operating budget, we'll look at a revenue update and also expenditure. At this point, it's a request, obviously. It's going to take another one or two months for the executive developers proposed. Um, propose the budget, but at this point we kind of know what people want, what people need. We're also going to talk about uh, multi-year projections, which is another thing that the committee usually look at uh, beyond one year, but also looking into the future. And then we're also going to look at the CIP side, same about the funding, um, funding capacity versus uh, what, what people have been asking for and represent the infrastructure needs of this county. And in the end, we're going to talk a little bit about the action has been taken so far by the county um, and also some of the strategies we are plenary on in order to address the challenges there. As you can see that um, I'm going to share a little bit of pay of mine today. Okay, so of course on the revenue side, uh, it's well, it's a pretty good picture, <laughs> comparatively speaking. Uh, based on our, our preliminary projections, total revenue growth for county general fund is going to be uh, around $36 million, it's about 3.3% growth. And that's largely comparable to last year. Last year's budget, if you recall, is a 36.5 million growth. So it's very similar, even slightly better. And we're going to go over that in a little more details, but these are a quick summary of the big items there. As you all know, transfer obligation tax are the biggest component of the all revenues there. They are also the key drivers of the growth. In this case, um, pretty much all of the growth is driven by these two items here. We have other smaller um, revenue sources there. They change a little bit, um, but on um, aggregate, not as significant there. So I'm going to go over that in a little more details later. So as we just talk about property tax, income tax, uh, make up 90% of total county uh, general fund revenues. Uh, everything else are um, only about 10%. First about uh, 
property tax. Uh, every year, the State Department of Assessment Taxation assess the county one third um, to show the reassessment, and they will have the full growth um, duty in the next three years. So every time they look at a property's value compared to three years ago, and the growth get phased in. So the most recent group assessed is Area 2, which is to the west side of the county. Um, and that average um, out is about 2.8% a year, very similar to the fire group, which is every one assessed last year. So that combined with the third group that's, um, that's uh, two years ago, and come up to about 2.5% of growth based on the FBAT latest projections here. The number is not surprising. In the past the three, four years, we have in general seen anywhere between 2 to 3% growth on average. So this is Watery but very solid, and that's the majority of the county revenue, and that continues to be the case. In terms of reassessment, this is a little bit cloudy, but it's an interesting one. It shows the four assessment growth before three years phased in, but it also shows the breakdown between residential versus commercial. The one on the very top is residential and the, the one in the middle is commercial and the one um, on the bottom is the total. So if you look at Howard County, um, it's a couple of things to point out. One is that um, numbers has been tracking behind the state average for several years in a row, meaning the county's overall reassessment growth has not been matching the state average. Um, so that probably speaks to um, the comparative slowdown of the county assessment growth. The second point to make is that if you look at commercial versus residential, you will find commercial has been doing very well is for most of the past several years, the growth has been double digit. Again, it hasn't been phased in. But still, it's very strong versus residential, it's always single digit for three year growth there. So commercial base has been doing very good and some of the early presentations you heard from EDA, from business representative talking about uh, why there just needs to be continued policy in terms of try to promote the commercial growth in the county there. Uh, because as a share, there is still a rather small share of the total assessable base growth here. Okay, income tax. This one is an interesting one because it has been extremely difficult to figure out the performance for an individual year. I think we have a pretty good idea about the trend, but when it comes to individual year, there's a lot of uncertainty, sir. So first to look at the historical trend, these are the annual percentage change of income tax. So first you can see that it has been very volatile, sometimes double digit increase, sometimes double digit decrease here. So it's changed a lot. But overall in the last two decades, if you have a trend line building, you can see that in general has been more and more moderate. But we still on average we have three to four percent growth in the last like a ten years on average. So what impact the fundamentals um, of income tax are multiple factors, a lot of economic factors like the labor market, the wage growth, um, demographic change we talked about earlier, the housing shift and also income change and also the disparity of income and higher versus lower income and also federal tax law change that's going to uh, actually in the past several years that has been a very important factor driving the changes here and also the last one distribution factors in fact in recent years this distribution factor has been even more important when it comes to including years of performance because what we found out is there is a very significant discrepancy when it comes to individual years between the income tax distribution to a rural county and actually my understanding for other counties as well and the actual personal income growth there because the timing and dollar amount does not really match. So if you look at the two lines, the orange color one is the personal income growth in the county. And Dr. Clinch actually shared with the, the group earlier, um, that's most of our historical data, only most of the reason one or two years are estimated. So you can see that it bounces around, but it's relatively close, usually between two to five percent a year in the last uh, decade. And on average, it's about 3.9%, um, 3.6%. The personal income um, tax, however, has been much more volatile and it has been bounced around all over the place there. 
um, how they ever match that, usually it's either higher or lower in terms of percentage. When you look at the same average, it's actually similar. Uh, in the last decade also, it's 3.9%. So it's almost um, very, very close to what the overall post when you talk about the moving average, the average performance. But when it comes to individual year, there's a huge discrepancy, um, and usually between seven point between anywhere it could be negative 9.2% or plus 7.3%. And on average, the difference is 3.7%. What does that mean is that for any single year, if your true um, personal income growth is 3.7% in the county, but the income tax could be 7.4% uh, growth, or it could be 0%. So that's just average. The <coughs> So why is that um, the volatility and discrepancy are um, distributed are attributed to the state distribution <coughs> factor, which happens is because the state um, the state doesn't really know for sure how much was happening that year until at least a year later. Sometimes because of delayed payment, etc. Even um, later than that, and usually it's between one to two fiscal year before they know exactly what happened in prior years and then they have to do the reconciliation. So that's part of that. The other one is they don't really have very detailed data by individual county. Um, in fact, the actuals usually have four to five years left on that. So what happens, they are making a guess. Not only they are making a guess by the pie, but also try to get the, make a guess about the share of individual counties. So that in that process, sometimes they overestimate a county's share, sometimes they under, then they try to do corrective actions. And usually they never get it perfectly, so either they end up being much higher or much lower, so somehow bounce around the true trend line on that. And lastly, there's capital gains and other factor makes, makes a change there. But in more recent years, even more um, difficult is because the federal tax law changed, as we all know that uh, um, a few years ago, the, the, the federal government introduced uh, the legislation that has a um, significant tax rate uh, deduction and also together with some other items there. As, as a result, that um, the state officials did a lot of efforts trying to simulate and try to make an educated guess about what does that mean, how consumer is going to change behavior, <laughs> and uh, uh, how some people shift from one year to another in order to get tax benefit, and whether they change from itemized to standard de uh, deduction, and all those are really unclear. So <coughs> there are some placeholder there, but they end up not always hit the right point. So as a result, actually, most recently, the 2020, we got some um, surprisingly um, strong performance. And when we talked with this, the state, in fact, just a few days ago, we and a few other counties have been working with them. They were saying, uh, don't count on that. Those bonds is actually the largely attributable to two years ago, the tax bill change, the exact reconciliation, and you shouldn't count on use it in the base for future years. So there's a lot of caveat when it comes to individual years. That's what I try to say. But on the other hand, the personal income was a still good indicator when you try to look at a few years together or longer term to understand the, the basic drivers there. So what happens is that, um, I already talked this earlier, that we are actually experiencing very volatile uh, growth there. But what we're doing is we try to remove those out, outliers or those like noises as much as possible, try to get close to the fundamentals here. Because FY20 may not be a a good year to, to look at that. What we are looking at is fiscal year 19. What if we building some growth there? So based on the uh, the economist the projection, personal income growth in FY20 and 21 are 3.5 and 3.1 percent. So if you get the two year together, it's roughly like 6.6 percent growth from two years ago. And two years ago in FY19, we know our actual income tax growth. So we kind of grow it that way. That way we we think that. Um, the projection we have is 6.4%, very close, just slightly lower than and the personal income growth there. We believe use that a method, we kind of remove some of the noises there and uh, getting closer to the base. Having said that, that does not guarantee that state's going to give you the right amount. They might lower or higher that, but that's very hard to predict at this point. The other thing is capital gains is always very difficult to predict. The last couple of years has been really, really good. 
going forward, more likely to be uh, less strong. So um, with this, I think we did take a slightly um, conservative approach, but I think it's with some protection and we match more closely to the trend line. Other revenues in the county, um, in general, they have, uh, in aggregate, they have uh, just a little bit decrease. It's mostly because the county recordation tax, which is tied to the transactions of residential and commercial property, has been trending down slightly. So both 19 and 20 today has been showing some weakening. So we're co continuing <coughs> to monitor that there. So that's why we're using a little bit in decrease in FY21. In terms of charges permits, it's actually also uh, dropped. The dollar amount is $1.1 million, not that much in the, to the total general fund of budget, but percentage-wise, it's actually pretty significant. And that's related to the recent slowdown of building permits and construction and development. And similarly, some of the charge and fees relief has been um, growing slower as well. I think earlier, um, in those economic discussion you already heard and saw some of the data showing the construction slow down. Again, we are monitoring that. We don't know whether it's more temporary scenario or it's a, or it's a new trend as a, as a um, reaction to both the economy and also the legislation. Uh, transfer tax about investment. This one has some increase because last year we building some one-time factors there. Last year we have, I think, about 2.5 million a one-time transferring from other funds definitely to debt service. So that's just not in the base, so we should put it out there. State aid, we have a little bit um, increase based on governor's proposal. I think I have a slide here. Yeah, I will put that there. So the state aid update was based on governor's proposal. Um, the direct state aid to the county was um, about 5.3% growth, however, of the total, uh, I think about 90 percent, more than 90 percent, <laughs> was designated to our education entity, sir. Um, and so the county's own general fund state is very limited. Um, in total, it's 10 million ish, less than that. So they have very minor uh, increase in general, and one of them actually have a little bit decrease. So the level of revenue. Um, which represent a relatively good year <laughs> these days, there are not going to be sufficient to support what we um, think is um, needed and based on the request of all the agencies, including our education entities there. So what's on the top of revenue growth, so the 8.1 million again here, good. But if you look at the expenditure side, the aggregate is 111.9 million, which is um, almost three times, almost three times of the revenue growth there. So if you look at the component, yeah, 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 look at the component there. Um, so um, the the school request is not the board's official request. They're still in the process of discuss um, in the work sessions. So <coughs> these are based on superintendent's request. I think he was, yeah, he was here earlier to present to this group. So you are familiar with that. That's a 54.2 million after excluding the one-time request of nine million dollars from the county to help with the uh, health fund issue. And the community college library also has needs in order to address staffing and services there. So education <coughs> that alone, the record request is already 60.7 million increase compared to the whole county's revenue goes is only 38 million. And the county has a lot of uh, mandates also to take care of the most uh, um, striking one is debt service payment. As we all know, every year we issue debt and new due bond in order to uh, finance capital budget. As time goes on, those debt service principal and interest get into the base every year. And the growth, um, very preliminary obviously, is uh, the um, estimate shows a little more than seven million uh, a year. That is the growth, so that's gonna take a pretty uh, sizable portion of the overall revenue growth. The OTAP, which is retired health benefit, we have a multi-year plan and try to gradually increase that. That's also, based on the plan, has a three million increase each year. There's also, um, again, this is already committed uh, as a done deal. Um, and there's some costs related to the office leases. There's about 2.5 million that we have to take about in fiscal 21 because there are different moves of uh, offices there related to those um, Shifting of office and new agencies, <coughs> etc. We need to non center, innovate cent um, innovation center, and also the courthouse house um, So that thirteen million dollars that service you know, have in the new offices is the only thing that 
of those, 10 million of it is really has to happen because of the debt service increase and the two net drops. Yeah, right. The, the, the seven, seven, and the two point five. This yeah. ten million is like we have to do. Okay, so okay that, but it's a policy choice. Okay, that. but that so that puts about twenty eight million dollars of discretionary where we can spend the other the remaining potential interest. Right. So right. the three million dollars from the thirty eight. Yeah. So the three million dollar incremental that thir that three million. How much would that look based on the, on that three million dollar increase? How much will be going towards OPEB? Um, in fiscal year 21. The total amount? Yeah. And that's 16. 16. And that's, that's, that's not, that's on top of paying for the current year. The current year. That's yes. the 16 to put aside to get into the debt to the Yeah, he's not incremental on top of the Okay, so, so that $3 million will get us to $16 million going towards. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. And that's what we're going to, again, that's a policy choice, but we did. Did everybody understand that? So what happens is it's kind of like a pension, um, pension liability. There, the, the, the county has annual payment to retiree health benefit, but also we have long time and um, funded liability on that. And given time, because we have more and more people retire, and that's cost is going every year. So, uh, in order to gradually approach where they need to be down the road, the county had a policy established years ago to not only pay what you need to pay that year, but also come with addition to that. So given time there, you gradually address this and find You'll never fill it, but Yeah, getting closer. <laughs> we wanted you to say <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I include the uh, <coughs> office as well? Sorry? Does that include the school system as well? Yes, yes. So that part actually, um, the incremental funding on top of the payroll, the majority is actually for the school employees, and there's also for the community college. Oh, and by the way, the debt service is the same thing. Debt service payments yeah. pay all the capital project, including all the education entities as well. I, I just wanted to make sure when Steve was saying that the pieces that can't be touched in the 28 is more discretionary, but the MOE is a mandate. If we do not mm -hmm. obligate it, then yeah, but I, I, on this list, I don't see, I don't know what the number that, is. Well, well, no, and that's what I was yeah. going to yeah. say. Yeah. But if we're going to talk yeah. about what's discretionary, but, but, but that's, that's not discretionary. So I think if we the state will that garnish it if you don't do it. Uh, so. so the true mandates, or like you have to do before you do anything, is this 10.4 million, right? Uh, so yeah, MOE is 10.4. Which is made his efforts. So now we're down to And you have the debt and the lease, and we're talking 10 million, so at least you about 18. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> oh, a quick question. With all of the, I, I guess, the recent um, discussion regarding the, the school system health care fund, and I know lately there was some exchange yeah. think, between the county executive. Does that dollar amount, I guess, and I don't know exactly whatever, but does that dollar amount being discussed also go into the superintendent's request, or is that like something totally separate? Yes. The, um, this amount here, 54.2 million, oh, was excluding, okay, excluding that 9 million of one time request, because what we are discussing is the ongoing right. revenue. Uh, what superintendent was asked for is on top of his normal uh, requests, all right, for, for their opening needs on that, they also want some assistance from the county to help with, with them um, to tackle the historical debt in their deficit in their house fund on that. Um, that house fund deficit, if you recall, was 39.2 million at the, as of the end of fiscal year 19. Um, so even the, the issue was that the it was kind of like a, a school issue, but understand their challenge. They recently kind of just uh, responded to a draft uh, plan offered by the school with some modification. In general, um, my understanding is that the it looks like there um, looks like basically consensus in terms of yes, let's collaborate on that. The county agree to make about one third of the effort, uh, the contribution towards lower, lowering the. The deficit in the school will do the rest two thirds, but it's going to take probably up to four years to get it done. But with some actions starting from the current year, and the goal is every year bring down about ten million. So in, throughout the next uh, um, four years, can gradually eliminate that deficit. But that's for the county side. If everybody agree upon, and if the state <coughs> agree to exclude that one-time funding from county from maintenance efforts calculation and everybody else agree on some more technical details, then that will take, take effect. So.
Yeah, yeah. My understanding is people are still in discussion, but in general, there's a uh, looks like there's a mutual need to our uh, the entire community network. In general, there's sure. The, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Jahan Tafsidiki with the school system. Um, the board approved. Um, the superintendent's recommendation uh, to uh, move, move forward with developing an agreement based on the county executive's uh, modifications. So that request of nine million would go down to six million uh, for FY21. Uh, and instead of using the entire uh, unassigned fund balance in the current fiscal year 2020, we'd be using $7.2 million of that unassigned fund balance to pay down that uh, deficit. So uh, essentially an effective reduction of 13.3 um, in the next sort of six months or so. So real, real quick, so, um, from a revenue growth projection, those revenue growth projections assume no changes. Um, yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, this is based on the current, current. law, current Revenue structure, current expenditure structure. So Everything that's been approved by the council right. already right. is built into that 30 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And There's nothing, nothing and it, more was assumed. And we're at the statutory limit for uh, income tax, for the piggyback income tax. So in the, the income tax, the state law um, put a cap, is 3.2% uh -huh. of tax rate. The county is already at the cap. Okay. So, um, okay. and the property tax, there's no cap, but we are second highest among all and if one cent increase in property tax equates to how much in additional revenue? It's about 5.3 million. About 5.3 million. And that, if, if there were, because uh, uh, we, we increased, the, the fire tax was increased by the council last year, right. um, which was more than one cent. Right. And so if, if, that, if there was a change, if, the, if there was a recommendation to increase the property tax rate, um, and the council voted on that. Would that go into effect in fiscal year 2021, or would it take until 2022? That we have to check because even those local uh, I think the state has to either in a written order to know in time on that. Okay. Yeah. So that's really to check on, on that. And then the trend. I know there's the transfer tax. There's discussion about transfer tax at the state level right now. Right. But the transfer tax dollars would have no impact right. on, on operations. We later have a slide. Do you go over that? Yes. Okay. There, no. Later we have a slide talk about all the revenue action has been taken or okay. pending. But, I didn't have but you pointed out something very important, Steve, that all the ones we have been taken or we are aware of are none of us are directly the general fund. Everything there has been done. There are other other funds, funds, special funds, funds, all capital funds out there. Those all individual surveys there, but none of the items have been tackled or so the, increase, the increases are, are in to this. All the all the increases that we're gonna see in um, some of the costs related to development, that's not gonna impact the operating budget. There, uh, there are some because you're talking about future trips, right? Yeah, not, not, not to the immediate not, not immediate, yeah. Yeah. future years there um, <coughs> it will be because for the new development um no matter whether it's commercial there mm -hmm. You do have income tax because in general you have net increase of population. That's not what I mean. I mean some of the, the impact fees and things like that. They impact no. Those are also go to capital. So that's the capital that has yes. no impact on no, no, nothing, nothing really. <laughs> Can't use it to help with that sort of thing. <laughs> that's where it just comes out of the office. Yes. Thank you. Well, indirectly because you won't have SAR as much? You, yes. Yeah, that happens around here. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. Question. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. On the revenue side, uh, I saw a line item uh, pertaining to permits and uh, um, so I guess I think construction permits and I think it was a, a slide before this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so last last year, the county council I think discussed that there were about 250 or so uh, permits that were not. Uh, or permit fees uh, related to construction and other items that were not uh, revised in the last uh, 20 years. Um, so has there been any analysis done to look at the impact of uh, updating those fees on, on the revenue uh, growth? Um. 
We haven't uh, specifically say building permits, but we or development uh, fees on that. But we have been asked every department to look at any fees that is not comparable with other counties or not matching the true cost on that. So we did ask uh, uh, folks to look into that there. So we really haven't got a chance to to get together. We haven't met with any. Um, agencies yeah, have to discuss like, uh, that. I'm sure such a topic will come up on that. If there is any item people feel like uh, not comparable with others in terms of like we charge too low compared to other things, that will be uh, things yeah. we'll uh, yeah. Yeah. Add one Go point. Ahead. So, for example, if you look at uh, permit building permit revenues, it's a laundry list of uh, fees. So we're not looking at each individual fees, but in the aggregate, right? The revenue generated from building permits uh, fees is it covering the cost of administering inspections, etc. Uh, so if there is a gap and we're not recovering our cost, then we would look at the individual components that need to be adjusted to bring us closer to that. And that's an exercise we do uh, every year. Uh, in addition, historically, we lump all our fees together and we do uh, a review of one third of the fees, like development related, etc., every year to see to make sure we're recovering, we're recouping uh, all our administrative expenses. So it was revealed that they were not updated in the, in the last uh, 20 updated years. Updated so. means, again, in the example I gave, if you look at the building permit schedule, there may be specific uh, fees that have not changed. But in the aggregate, our goal every year is to make sure we come close to recovering our expenses. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean every single component of the fee schedule uh, you know, is adjusted on an annual basis. Okay. Um, the other thing that to, um, well, it's sort of both related to this and the next slide is uh, so since we just talk about any other extract like, tax that's supporting general fund. Uh, one issue is that if you look at this, this the revenue, 3 point some percentage, this is um, kind of a wealthy good year given the most recent years, like the last several years has been lower than that. So what happens is if you look at this bottom line, it's <coughs> almost three times the revenue growth. Some obviously there are some enhancement um, kind of wish list included as well, but a large portion of these actually are true costs because of the way the because the cost of doing business, including salaries, <laughs> salary increase, fringe benefit, health benefit, pension, retirement income, it just keep growing. Plus other mandates like debt service, maintenance effort for school, these are all kind of growing. So the fundamental difference, and um, that's even not before picking up the population growth, no matter student or senior citizens, there that's add on top of the same service level service cost increase. So that's why uh, the three percent even looks pretty good. It's not likely um, support the ba basic needs unless people try to take some way to for efficiency, try to generate some internal savings there. The problem is that it's not a one year thing. So in other words, if people believe that we cannot live with the needs with that percentage, then that's going to be repeated every year. So in other words, if tax is the primary solution, then you have to raise that tax every year because it's not going to be one year deal because it's not a one problem. So that's why I think we will continue to explore all the revenue um, options and you're going to see the one we have been doing and we'll continue to look at that. But eventually, unless people are ready to raise tax not once, but every single year, otherwise the primary solutions do have to make it live within me. So. Yeah, go ahead. Back to the question that was raised about the development fees and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is the, I guess, general rule of thumb that ultimately we're trying to recoup our, our cost, or is it that we're trying to use it as a as a way of generating revenue? revenue? I mean, because I think that that ends up being almost two different frames of thought. I mean, based upon how you end up there in pricing thing. Yeah. So I, I think at the point where you start uh, generating more revenues and uh, expenses, it becomes a tax and not a fee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you have. So, you have the issue that in low development periods, you've just built the base that no longer is there, and you've probably allocated those dollars somewhere else, yeah. and now they're not there. Right. It's the same issue with income taxes. <coughs> we talked about that. You know, Steve, when he was chairing the committee uh, a number of years ago, kept talking about 
you know, the capital gains tax, you know, if you spend that every year and you build that in your base and when, when it goes down and up and suddenly you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I cover that gap that I don't have because because it was a bad year or people decided not to sell or whatever, uh, because that, that's, that, if you break up personal income tax, that's more the more volatile part of the personal income tax. I have a question. So yeah. on your overhead administrative charges, mm -hmm. so you're just basically trying to recover the cost. So does that include, say, some of the portion of the um, debt service, some of the portion of the um, health benefits of the employees in those particular areas? I mean, are we just looking at basic salaries and, and those type of things? The other thing is, why aren't we doing a yearly review of our fees or you know, biannual or every five years? It seems rather, if you look at the lump of it and say, okay, these are the, you know, the, the bulk of it, it seems that are we, uh, you know, as a question, so. Uh, yeah, I think for your first part of uh, your question, the answer is yes. <laughs> so we do look at overhead costs and uh, not just at direct expenses, but overhead charges. And the second part, uh, we did have a practice which we're planning to resume uh, of looking at all our uh, user fees, a third of it, every single year. And we had a consultant that uh, helps us with that. So we're starting that process again. Uh, initially, we, we stopped it when the budget was a little bit tight and we started doing it internally. But every year, when we start the budget review process, uh, we ask departments that are responsible for uh, administering the, the fees to look at the expenses, severe expenses, and make sure they're recovering their costs. So that is an internal process we go through every single year. Okay. Sounds like the other recommendation we might want to right. add in. Yeah. That is a good point, sir. Periodically, probably do need someone like this expertise to take a closer look at um, besides our own. Okay, so this is a long term trend. Again, the graph probably just the shape looks very similar to what the committee has been saying before um, the actual dollar amount might change every year. These are the long term preliminary projections of um, <coughs> expenditure. Um, the expenditure side, by the way, are um, reflecting the preliminary input from all the agencies, including our education entities. And these are not the only official um, requests for future years. Just to clarify on that, these are the staff, like, uh, uh, you did to try to figure out the cost drivers and have a quick uh, assumption about what will likely be in the future. But if you can see the most uh, clear um, Takeaway is that the blue line, the total revenues versus the expenditure, the red, are very different. Not only that, the pace is different. So the growth rate of, the, of revenue versus expenditures are, are different, but also more and more of the gap. It's not like the, in parallel, that means you, if you close in one year, you will be fine. It just continues to be like that. So that's why there are some structural problems that we have to look at that. Um, and have a plan and write and address that every year. So the challenge, that's why I'm saying the challenge will likely remain. And we kind of have been looking at the scenario for a couple of years now and it looks like they might continue um, into the future. And, and how in future growth, expenditure growth, mm -hmm. uh, we're not taking into account wish list. I mean, this is uh, our best judgment and best ju judgment of departments of uh, the projected uh, expenditure growth and your baseline expenditure. So it's not any wish list embedded in these out year numbers. Uh, we do include a very well, mandated, very, yeah, very limited, uh, like uh, you know, one time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for these one time adjustments, we're mainly looking at uh, things that are mandated or we have no choice but to do. For example, in FY22. We're going to have expenses related to the courthouse, mm -hmm. so that has to be factored in. We have that obligation, we can't avoid it. But outside of that, it's not uh, like any kind of uh, a wish list that's inflating those numbers. So, so that graph you showed in the previous slide mm -hmm. does not pertain to the previous graph. What you're saying is that graph is on the base without the $50 million of school that's just considering maintenance of effort? No, 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 the 21. <coughs> Right. The full so that's based on the previous graph, right? Correct. Do you have one that would just be on um, what, like maintenance of effort for the schools and, and OPEB that zero increase just based on last year's and so forth? Would that bring it more down to the whatever color the lower line is? Okay, so are you saying, because currently it's... What you're saying is, is get rid of 
the so number of all the increases that okay. people are asking to Only so have flat right. funding. Only have exactly. Flat required. funding on what you need to increase. And required for, the for additional debt service. Right. We can try that. Especially if we the vote for zero is that, additional debt. Right. Yeah. The question is, um, there's certain parts is, the part that's mandated is, um, absolutely mandate that is really easy to figure out, right? There's the maintenance effort driven by student enrollment, debt service projections on that. That's all the same. That. But the question is that what about, like, are you talking about the health, health benefit cost increase, pension increase, there are just actuaries kind of projection on it? Yeah, well, you have to put that, right. Do we need to put anything, or like you were saying, zero to see if you're I think, I think that my gut tells me that there's still a delta. There's still a gap. It's not as big, obviously. Right. But the piece that's going to bump it up is in 22 when we have to start paying the four thousand. Yes. That's going to bump it up anyway. Yes. Right. Right. This is not going to be as big. I just wanted to know that was based on fifty-five million dollar increase, which isn't reality, obviously. Yeah. So that's why the starting year, the starting year here is 21. You start to see the gap. I think what you're saying, if you remove that, because when we close the budget, you're going to move this whole line down a little bit, but the shape is still going to be a difference plus every year from there. It's just the beginning year, you, we, will, we will have to have a balanced budget, so eventually we have to get those two lines close. close. Yeah, the line may be closer, but the rate of growth is still different. We need to go in the out years. So, the next page is just some of the um, percentage numbers um, as a nutshell there. One thing is that we also understand that from all the future years projection is really preliminary based on a lot of assumptions so that could change. So the purpose is mostly to show the trend rather than try to be accurate for every single year. But to give a sense, we did like a new sense of test. So okay, what, what if like if revenue better by a, a percentage or as kind of a Craig was, was saying that what if, what if expenditure can be moving down, like let's just say 1%, what does that mean? It's going to improve a little bit, but only a little bit, because if you move just one percentage up or down, um, the actual with improvement, then the gap becomes 2.6% between revenue spend rather than 36 and the average gap instead of 204 million, it will be only 160 million on average in the next six years. So it is improvement, but still doesn't. Help. So it, it needs a very significant change um, on the expenditure side or rather on all combination to, to make this work. Okay, so the just quick discussion on the um, assumptions behind this number for last year. Again, these are for out years, obviously, it's a lot of the guests. Uh, we're, we're trying to do trend analysis based on, and also based on what we know. Revenue, property tax, 2.2%, income tax, 3.4%. Those are mostly based on trend plus projected um, future um, economic um, base there. Local tax, the state share charge, I mean, these are all very minor changes one way or another, uh, essentially based on more reason trend on that. There's one thing to keep in mind is fiscal year 21 looks relatively good because we haven't seen any economic uh, recession or downturn yet, so we, we think we should be cautiously on this continuously. But as time goes on, as people are aware of, and some of the economists all <coughs> mentioned earlier that there are a lot of uncertainties there, and both on the economy, on the politics side, on the potential federal state action there, and, and which coupled with legislation, state and locally, as well as um, the distribution factor. So there's a lot of volatility and uncertainty there, which actually is interesting because recently I attended a meeting, kind of like spending a whole meeting here, except I sit in a meeting for DC and the, and they everybody around the room, the word I heard most is uncertainty. They, they are a lot of uncertainty what's gonna happen. So again, may not see anything right away in twenty one, but going forward if we go planning properly, we do have to consider risk, risks there and make sure we have some way to address that. Expenditure side is just the, um, the the breakdown of different components. Um, the education's at the bottom, and other and um, is the public safety and other agencies there. The one actually the um, navy color on the top on that that was the debt service. You can see that's not the biggest component, but actually that growth probably will continue to be outpace the revenue, and that's the one we have to have to address because we continue to finance and support of the CIP projects. Um, the other thing is there are some known cost of drivers, as I just said, that the cost of provide the same service 
uh, same level of service for all departments, agency, agencies typically already grow faster than their revenue um, case in general. But then on top of that, we have to pick up additional debt service payment, which grow faster. And then there's a population demands from different groups on that, and no matter senior groups there, stu students, and also people in needs for, for, for different um, diversified groups there. So those are also on top of what the main, same service, sometimes same service is not enough. People want more and want additional service there. Um, so that's, that's the challenge we have to face, plus a couple of things that we have to address in the coming years, um, that um, education maintains efforts and to extent possible, we try to do more than in terms of efforts, uh, although our capacity we do not allow a lot, but we try to do as much as possible, and also for other education entities there, because they're all needed by the community, and uh, one time it's a house fund, which is from surplus, um, but we also have to take a cup of that courthouse down the road there, um, between 22 and 24, we need to pay additional costs for any service, uh, and also the debt service related to that, and both police and the sheriff, um, will have some needs have to be addressed. Police chief was here earlier, you heard about, heard talk about their sworn officer has been um, stagnant for years, even the population has been growing and more complexity of case they have to deal with. So it's almost ha at a point that they have to take some action. Unfortunately, so far we haven't been able to provide any additional um, sworn staff, but they really hope to get um, get some um, plan going. So we're in discussion on that and share it because uh, they're going to move to the new courthouse, and there was uh, both secure, original security needs plus the layout of the, of the of plan needs to have more uh, staff there. So there are a lot of uh, needs plus different dimensions, as you all know. And when we have a uh, capital project going on, don't forget on the opening side, it's not only debt service, sometimes there's staff up cost there, uh, staff up cost there with staffing, there's operating maintenance, there's a lot of supplies, contract service, a lot of other needs we need. How much is the carrying on the fact on an operating basis for a new school? For a new school, the operating cost on an annual basis? Like for a new, when we add a new school to the... I don't have that figure. Okay. They're all different sizes. Right, it's going to depend on the size It depends size on what kind of school it is, and it's not a square foot. But I've asked the question. Yeah. I mean, is, it like, my is it like a couple million dollars? High school 13, what's that kind of cost? A lot. Okay. So there are what they call OPI, operating budget. So when the 13 coming online, is that next fiscal year? 2023. So there will be maintenance of effort needs there, but then we're also going to have to cover the cost right, of Right, exactly. You're going to add to the building, you have the cost of that, the operating it, all that stuff, exactly. plus the debt service. Okay. And I've asked that question. I I'm, all, I'm not I'm just asking. I mean, unfortunately, you're so no, it's, no, but I really it's not a bad No, I want to yeah, say that's, that's something that um, traditionally yeah. they don't factor in. No, and I have asked the debt. question that when they give cost? us a new yeah. building, yeah. they should give us projected yeah. operating costs yeah. for once in the out years so that we can calculate it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm sorry, is there any reason why they don't give the money? I think it just hasn't been, for my time on the board, it hasn't been. As, as a first order, just, just a, uh, back of the envelope, if you divide the operating budget by the number of students, that would, that would give you, like, um, that would, wouldn't that give you, I mean, it's not exact, but that's, that would be a, at least a first order estimate of what it would cost to add a new school. It would be a really rough number because you've got you've got all of the the top line operating costs. You've got the the operating costs for older buildings, which is more expensive, stuff like that. So it could get you, you know, maybe it says it's up around or says it's five million, but maybe it's really three point eight because that other number. But you're right, you could get big ballpark. You know, maybe we're in a big stadium, not a small ballpark. But. So the state maintenance effort has really tried to have that per pupil cost, mm -hmm. like overall operating cost per pupil, and then use that to say, you know, we yeah, expect so much fun on that. But that's not necessarily specific, like which parts of the state. Well, we just saw, I mean, we saw that the the increase this isn't, isn't, I mean, based on the growth is less than the cost per pupil, right? Mm -hmm. The cost per pupil is 18,000, and the expected growth was only 6,500. Mm -hmm. 
for a new student. Well, because every new student doesn't require the same thing. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same math that yeah, he was, that, that, he was talking about. It's yeah, like right. it's, you know, some level of scale there. Right. And some of the students will be taken from other schools, so it's not like they're new additions. Yeah. I mean, so they've taken yeah. off one and moved to another, so just to try to figure okay. But you could get a round number based on staffing for average staff and average students. Do you have another? Hey, just a question about the level of service. Um, it, was, it was just said earlier that, if, you know, the same level of service is being provided um, I just didn't. I didn't see what metric what metric is being used to um, say that the same level of service is being provided. That it, is based it, on. Okay. It was in the in the con when you were discussing the previous slide. You mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, that same. was basically that's just a some that's just like based scenario assumption. This will be add on your service, right? The baseline assumption is like for all agencies, same level staff, same contract services, we don't expand anything on that. So that's basically what we're because there are so the same so the same people and then um so quantitatively not qualitatively. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you're not necessarily getting the same level of service for the next citizen, same. but you're getting the same level of dollars. So it's the same level of dollars, but not it's not the same level of service. So that needs to, that's that's what I'm trying to understand. No, no, actually, I think it's the same level of service, cost them all. Yeah, it's not the same yeah. dollar amount. It's not the same dollar amount. More dollar amount, but the same level of service. Oh, okay. well, there's, there's the same number of staff. Just for example, I, I, I removed. Yeah. Assume I award my dollar. Mm -hmm. If we're spending just use round numbers, if we're spending a million dollars for this service today, mm -hmm. right, and we're providing that service to the county, right. Right? and we don't increase those dollars next year, same million dollars spent next year. Then technically we will have that. Exactly. Yeah. So you're saying that that model assumes that it grows at a growth rate. To have growing costs of the same. To but at, but a, to maintain the same growth rate. Okay, right. Yeah. So what, what metric, that, that's, you know. That's, that's like a. Like, like this, for example, uh, assuming I'm an employee, right? I provide, I don't know, snow re removal service there. I have a salary. I have a, a fringe manager. I health care costs. I have a pension. That no, does increase in a normal year, right? It does increase. And then if I work with contractor to provide something, the contractor usually doesn't keep the contract same cost for the next 10 years. They usually have inflation growth as well. Supplies that get to one hour, you have to buy new supplies, you have to maintain that. Those are increased on that. So that, that's, that's the cost that usually for the same service in a given year, typically it's going to increase. Although we work with agents to try to generate savings, so to mitigate that cost. And, and even before you get to contract services, the like, biggest portion of our budget is personnel costs. So if you look at the same number of positions, next year they're going to cost more. They have uh, tallness, they have step increases, they have uh, the health insurance is going to go up, pension rates go up. So we look at all those elements that make up the personnel costs for the same number of employees, we project that out. So it's going to cost you more to have the same number of staff as you do but, currently. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah, but, but the, his argument is, or I think the question is, you can't make the argument that if I keep the same number of employees, even if that cost goes up slightly for those employees, then I'm necessarily getting the same level of service to more citizens. Yes. Right? So that's not same service level. Quantitative that's versus more quantitative. service level. What you said is more service well, level. Well, no, it's no. it's more service level in an expense, but as the user, it's, not it's the same service level. Right. Yeah. Right? Yes. And if population grows, then what happens is on top of the same service, you have to have additional service. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, so originally it's 10 people, now you have 20 people. But yeah. you're, you're saying additional service because you're thinking from the perspective of here. On um, aggregate. I have, no, not an aggregate. From here, I have, I have 10 employees, I need 11 employees. That's additional service. Me as a user, my road was plowed yesterday. Now it's two days to get my road plowed. That's less service, right? Even though I might need more employees to do that two days to do it the same, and it's additional service to you, it's still same service to me because I got that yesterday. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, and if we look at so that's that's a good example, and then the other um, you also mentioned you know personnel. Um, 
uh, tension, those kinds of things. Um, but if you look at, for example, uh, class sizes, if they're going up every year, or if there's if, if traffic congestion is uh, increasing every year, um, or if the police response rate the two incidents is increasing every year, is that the same level of service uh, provided every year? And I did not. The dollar amount is increasing uh, every year, but can we substantiate that the level of service is being maintained every year? And I did not see any metric that would substantiate that. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think you're focusing on the quality of the services that are provided, right? And, and what we're focusing here is on the cost of it. But I understand your question. But those are the, I mean, it's not the quality. I mean, if you're, if you're paying. I'm not discounting that, but I'm saying what? I'm trying to differentiate between the presentation and the point you're making. What we're saying is for the same existing staff we have, as an example, it's going to cost us X amount next year because the expenses, pension, et cetera, are going up. That's the point we're trying to make. The issue we have at the, at, the, at the end of the day is that our, you know, our expenses, obviously, as you can see from the previous slide, and I know that maybe not great, maybe not be realistic because we're not going to spend 50, $54 million in this year, we're not going to spend other big numbers, we're not going to spend $38 million for other county agencies we don't have the money, is that unless we do something on the revenue side, for the growth that we have, we're not going to replace some of the issues on the expenditure side. The largest bucket of growth is happening in the school system, um, and we have to determine, you know, and we've talked about this for years, what does the county want to do for that? But that's not the purview of this particular committee. We don't make those decisions. Those are made across the hall and upstairs. We get to make them once every four years. Maybe you could wait two days for your road to get plowed. Yes. Well, and, and the flip side of that is, for instance, community service partnership grants are being held even this year. Same P, same organizations being funded, level funding, which actually means Less while they're expected to provide the same level of service, they won't, be. They won't yeah. get. They won't be able to do that. Yeah, um, right. that, that's a decrease yeah. in there. That's a cut well, in there. What I'm saying is, what we can do as a committee is yeah. say, based right. on what is in place today, <coughs> what can we spend yes. and what shouldn't we spend, and we can come up with additional recommendations to say, hey, you should look at this. This is these are areas you should look at, and that's what we'll ask for. But right now, you know, we're not, you know, we're not the ones who are making the decision to say. Right. Let's all vote, okay, we're raising taxes. That's, that's not our decision. From a semantics point of view, if we're talking about the same level of service, what they're saying is that to deliver the services we delivered this year to the same number of people at the same level, it would cost more next year. That's exactly what they're saying. That's right. what he's saying. Right. That's mm -hmm. It is not about well, the quality of that service or whatever. Right. It says right. that without yeah. doing anything, without anybody growing, without anybody uh, doing anything but staying right where we are, mm -hmm. it's going to cost more cost next year right. to do the same thing. It's not about level of service. It's about what services we delivered this year, what would it cost us to deliver those next year. To the same number of people, to the same whatever, it's going to go up regardless of what we do. And so it's just a different, it's a different measure. So speaking on the challenge, though, that's the challenge that, and that's really, um, that's the fundamental challenge to all the agencies, you know, no matter it's the education entities, the county agency, and also the nonprofits work together with, that's the challenge that like, people are facing um, currently, basically, and looks like going forward, because that's exactly how to sustain and to maintain the quality, you know, level of service, and in some cases, there are even rising needs there, how to answer that, but with very limited resources there, so that was a challenge. And both are operating the CIP, so this is a quick snapshot on the what is in the um, current FY21, not not the exact proposed CIP, because we're still in the, uh, in the process trying to, try to make it work. Um, where is it? This is what, um, okay, this is the some of the requests, our key um, projects. We just threw out the ones we know about. By the way, the GEO, as you know about, the county authorized GEO in the last few years has been um, gradually lowered to less than 90 million given the debt capacity issue, which our finance um, debt manager is going to talk about in a minute, about the debt capacity there. So if we continue to assume less than 90 million GEO, 
And just look at the big projects going here. It's already way above that, as you, as you can see. Um, the education uh, entities based on the P projects, uh, these are 65 million already. And the senior center um, is 17 million alone for fiscal year 21. A city for flood <coughs> mitigation, that's that's a big project, continue to need a lot of investment every year. Road, storm, and North Laurel Pool, which the committee has been waiting for a long time, but also again the big project, system renovation, that's an ongoing need there. And traffic, IT, the detention center needs five four million dollars just to do the the minimum maintenance with the renovation to keep them going and buy pedestrian plan. Any of this have a lot of needs and community stakeholders and they all have um, they are all justified. The problems when you add up together before we even add a lot of other they are already way beyond typically what you can afford in a year. So uh, what actions we have been taking really quickly as we do have as Steve mentioned earlier uh, have been looking at different revenue options sort of uh, in line with what the prior committee's recommendation. Fire fund, tax was raised last year, environmental service fund um, the, the trash fee was increased, the plastic bag fee was just um, passed, and that's going to take effect later in this calendar year. On the capital side, the council passed CB42, that actually is going to increase food surcharge charge significantly in, in a phase-in manner, and that's the revenue designated to, to the school capital project, so that should provide some support to, to the school capital projects in the um, in near future. And then the transfer tax there, we just learned that this, there's a state enabling bill that's going on there and looks like uh, it's likely to get passed on that. If so, then that will require local action there. And once that gets initiated, if elected officials elect to do that, then that's going to have additional resource and support it to capital project that was designated to school, recreation, park, and the fire capital project as well as housing program. But, but as we discussed earlier, these are all restricted funds and they are helping different types of service there, um, but they are not helping general fund <laughs> yet. Um, I'm not going over that, it's just some tax rate, uh, when do we change for our own reading when we have time. And again, when we talked earlier that we do have to balance the needs about um, how the taxpayers ask for their additional um, contribution with the needs to make sure we keep the debt burden as a reasonable level, we make sure the county is competitive in terms of attracting taxpayers, both residential and the commercial side on that, because our income tax as well as cost tax are among the higher. So our people here, they enjoy good service there, but they do pay a lot of revenue. We've said this before. You've yeah. said this before as a percentage of um, median income. Yes. Um, we can add that. Um, uh, okay. The uh, the other thing that um, I think, given the uncertainties um, for future years um, in terms of volatility of revenue and other um, un un uncertain uh, policy on that, there it's important to for us to continue to maintain adequate fund balance there. Um, we learned from the AAA, um, we learned from rating agencies here, our fund balance actually is uh, low compared to other AAA um, counties and also our financial advisor has been advising us um, for a couple of years to develop and uh, and improve our fund balance against the risks there. This is probably more important given the, the unknown for the future years on that. And also one thing to clarify, the rainy day fund as charter mandates here, the county has a rainy day fund as a reserve that's represent the equivalent of 7% of budget. That's, uh, that's really the minimum and required by law because the amount is really about <coughs> one or three weeks of cash and we've done to recommendations by a government finance officer, financial officers uh, association is really um, two, two months. So we are, we're not going to get two months, but uh, there's a How much do we have right now? We currently have just slightly above. Above three weeks? Yes. Cool. That's not good. Cool. cool. <laughs> um, so that's why I use an assigned fund on funnels. We that's have a finance term. Cool. <laughs> so that, that's why for an assigned fund, we have to manage to use and perfection. Make sure we, we always keep at the level there at the same time and use it um, for the critical needs there. Um, summary of the strategy, we're going to talk about revenue, but talk about the issue to, to balance the needs, um, but also to avoid you know, coming back to tax year, year after year. So, um, we do also need to boost the commercial base, find ways to continue to, to do that. Um, 
we do have to look at the expenditure side at this point unless there is a suddenly new revenue coming a lot. Otherwise, year after year, the expenditure side, we continue to have to work with everybody to find solutions, how to make things work with more efficiency, find innovative solutions. We actually already directed the county's own agencies a couple of months ago to come up with about 2% savings um, strategies there to try to make sure like that we eventually balance the budget since revenue spending have a, such a gap at this point. Um, and we do have to look at long-term um, planning solutions here. And that's both for operating and the CIP because capital, uh, one thing is not only the upcoming fiscal year, but also future years, the aggregate request in terms of capital needs versus the available funding, there is a very huge difference. It's about two to three times. So as a result, we really, as a big community, we have to understand the feasibility and the figure out a long-term planning and the, make, make the planning more uh, realistic. So with that, I have my, my, uh, I know I will write a song. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you should make that red. <laughs> I do have a question. So we always talk about income tax and how we're near the top, and that's, that is true. Um, and we talk about the fact that we don't want to drive people away from moving in the county. Is there any research to support that people actually use that as a factor as they're looking to come into the county? I mean, it makes sense intuitively, but I'm not sure if I was looking to come to Howard County that I would necessarily make the income tax one of the primary drivers of that. Versus moved, education or services or amenities. How long have you been in Howard County? Uh, 36 years. Yeah. When I moved from a different county to here, it hurt. <laughs> okay. It also made me I didn't even. I didn't. I didn't. Didn't even factor it. And I'm like, whoa, what happened? My paycheck. I know. Been, yeah. But have you considered moving? I mean, that that's the question. Does it move people out, or do they like what they get here? Is the quality so good that they are? willing to sort of absorb that additional cost. But well, we're already paying more, right? So as a, as a, that's why I asked for the percentage of the overall. But half of the jurisdictions in Maryland are at the top. No, but I was asking for the total burden based on burden based on because right, higher property values in higher county and higher tax rates, right. the burden's a little higher. Right. But there is an economics literature that says people move based on taxes, but okay. I don't think that's at the county level. Yeah. So, no, can, can you say with, with you? Because know, it's also a vector of the services offered. So I think people were willing to move here because of the high quality of services. Right, and that's what I was wondering. I mean, as we talk about the tolerance for increases, and I don't know <clears throat> the extent to which there's research to support it one way or the other. So the other thing to think about on the increases is that an increase in the, an increase in the um, property tax rate, um, and I, we did, I think we did this math last week. Oh, my, just one second. Uh, we did this math last year or the year before when we tried to figure out what the impact would be to somebody who owns a home on the on the um, uh, on the lower end of the median in, um, home value in the county, and it disproportionately would have a bigger impact on them to raise the real estate taxes for how much it would take out of their pocket every month versus but, somebody who's at the higher end. Now, I don't know about graduated tax rates on real estate or anything well, like that, but and you could look at progressive income tax too. So I mean, that's also an option. Just, just laying it on the table, <laughs> because I, there is this general assumption that we can't cover at the limit, yeah. and I know that that can be changed. Um, and the question is, do we need to look at it? I, I don't think we can do graduated income tax no. based on state. Yeah. So it's based on the state it's rate. State we get a percentage change. of the state to right, state. Right, but the state, state can so the the legislators are willing to. We can increase the income tax that ceiling. We have to have them. We can. They can, they can. They can. They can. Yes, but they can. they can, and they are willing. I think many of them are willing to consider it if that's a recommendation that comes out. I'm not saying we do that. I'm just saying that we shouldn't just take it off the table. But nope. that will probably come out of Kerwin. So I mean, yeah. yeah. So I think it's already going. Not for how it. Yeah. How it just just we, we do talk about so, dedicated yeah. taxes for school construction. Or is that only for repair and maintenance, not construction? So can we use those dedicated taxes to offset the uh, debt service tied to those? Or because we, we pay debt, we pay our debt payments out of operating budget. Uh, one possibility is using that to offset debt. The other possibility, more realistically, likely happen is people use that to support additional 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, because there's a huge gap still after these. Uh, it's not very likely. Okay, let's well, so let's so let's 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 do a whole project. I That's guess more likely. I'm not to be a cynic. So you get excited about those dedicated taxes, but all it does is increase our debt recovery. Well, and increase our operating costs. Yeah. Yes. That's okay. why we're asking the question because you build, okay, let's solve the, what was the total? It was, it was 206, 65? Yeah. Three hundred million dollars to, to do all the things we need to do to support the school system on the debt side. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of that's going to come with operating costs. Sure. Yeah. Question. Um. So I, I, to the question about you know with you know property increasing property taxes, whether or any taxes would that drive people out, or is that something that people take into consideration? And this discussion about quality of service came into came in, and that's why I was asking about level of service and. Um, to the extent that these considerations impact the revenue, the, whether people make a decision, whether that drives people's decision to stay or move, uh, and I think it was said that people look at the service, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's the quality of schools, that's what people are looking when they move here. That's, that's why I'm, um, I was asking about the level of service, and whether you know, we can, we can say with, with, you know, um, with certainty, you know, based on any metric, that that's the case. Because if that's not the case, then in the long run, people will move. And that will affect the revenue uh, adversely. And uh, I would, you know, perhaps that could be taken into account in the discussions, you know, you know, in the recommendations as well. Yeah, and I think the other thing you have to see a couple of things going against the you know long term revenue you know, pieces, right? And the other the other factor we're not talking about is the aging population and, and when they they're here, they stay here, but their 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 income tax levels go you know, from a from a from a personal income level go down, right? Because they've spent their 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 uh, working career trying to build uh, the ability to, to live off of uh, either lower tax dollars or tax free dollars. And, but they're still going to be paying real estate taxes um, to stay here. But we're going to lose we're going to lose a significant portion of revenue as that population as that population ages. So we've got so it's not just growth; it's also people who are here, right? That are going to impact future revenue. Um, so can I ask a question? Um, I think it's just zero to stop borrowing and we just go down and get my pocket. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not very clear. Yeah. I Good morning, I'm Nikki Burger with uh, the Department of Finance and I'm here to give you your annual updates on the, um, the policy measures um, for our debt management policy. Um, we'll also look at some of the projections based on our current assumptions and then um, one of the topics that um, previous um, committees have asked us to keep an eye on is the authorized but unissued bonds. So we have an update on that as well. So our first measure is um, debt as a percent of the accessible base. So this is our um, total outstanding debt. It includes our um, tax increment financing debt. It also includes all of our capital leases. Um, so if you look here, um, it has increased um, from 2.15% to 2.25% over the five-year period. Um, um, I will say that um, we're definitely below the 4.8% um, cap, and um, this is a measure that um, two, at least two of the credit rating agencies look at. Um, so this is then the forecast of where we think we will go um, in the future, based upon knowing that um, we'll have debt come on for the courthouse um, in 2022. Um, and then also we're assuming that we will be um, issued or off of the, the county will authorize about 90 million 
um, of additional debt each year. Um, we're assuming a 4.5% interest rate. Um, and we're also assuming that we're going to um, be whittling down um, the authorized but unissued, that those projects are moving forward now um, and that we will um, be issuing more debt in the next few years than is actually authorized because of that <coughs> um, backlog, I would say. Um, so you can see that um, the outstanding debt um, is expected to um, to increase, and then as we get through the um, the years where we know that the um, courthouse, we also include our P3 capital charge in here because um, that is something that the um, that the rating agencies would um, consider an outstanding debt. So keeping that in mind, and the P3 capital charge is just the portion of the um, fee that we pay to the um, operator of the courthouse for the debt portion. That doesn't include the operating fee that we would pay to them. So the next debt measure is um, the debt against, measured against the population on a per capita basis. Um, so this is not a measure that is considered by the credit rating agencies at this time, um, but it is still in our debt management policy, so we do report it to you. Um, and you can see that um, our population continues to increase over the past five years um, along with our um, outstanding debt um, and the debt per capita has increased from 3,146 to 3,689. So then our third measure that um, we report is um, per capita debt measured as a percent of per capita income. And so a limit of 10% is what was um, considered um, AAA level um, category. Um, it's no longer considered by the credit rating agencies at this time, but we do still report it. Um, and I will point out this is in $2,009 because it's updated with every census. So um, with this census that's getting ready to gear up, then we'll recalculate um, re the figures. Um, so you can see that debt as a percent of income has increased um, from 4.43% to 4.73% over the past five years. Um, so then this is um, debt service as a percent of current revenues. And so um, the goal within the debt management policy is to keep debt service to 10% or less of current revenues. Um, this measure is one that um, S&P does look at for our credit rating. Um, and just as a clarification, this includes general fund um, revenues. It includes transfer tax revenues because um, transfer taxes are used to pay debt service for specific categories of projects. Um, it also includes um, the environmental services fees, um, which are used to pay for bonds for that category of expenditure, and also the fire tax fund, which is used to pay um, for the fire projects. So you can see um, that as debt service has increased and revenues have increased, um, debt service has increased from 8.72% in 20 at the end of 2015 to 9.26% um, in um, FY19. So then as we look forward um, for the next 20 or 10 years, we project um, where we think that the debt service as a percent of revenues will be. Um, so you can see that we are expected to um, exceed the 10%. Um, primarily that's due to um, when we are going to um, start incurring the cost for the, um, the courthouse um, one time. Uh, payment, the milestone payment. Um, we also have, um, again, we're um, issuing the backlog in the authorized but not issued. Um, and, and then, of course, we do have the P3 charge that's going to come on. And the county is also um, considering a, um, a WIFIA loan, which would pay for um, a the significant work that's going to need to be done in Ellicott City for flood mitigation. Um, so that is expected to come on in 2026. 
How much do we retire in principal on an annual basis? Um, it's usually about seventy million. Um, so this is just an explanation of some of the increases. Um, higher bond issue its amounts are um, expected through twenty twenty three. Um, than the courthouse project. Um, and just our, we have talked um, this over with our financial advisor when we saw that we would you know, go above what our debt management policy recommends. Um, and so they um, advised us that they do not expect a change to the county's credit rating if the other categories remain the same. So that's um, another reason that we need to um, make sure that our fund balance doesn't start to dip because since we already know that we're pushing the issue with this one, we don't want to totally tip the scales and um, have a lower rating because that would then just cost us more money to borrow. So this is the authorized but unissued bonds. Um, so we started tracking this for FY 2016 um, and you can see that um, at that time it was almost a billion dollars. Um, and so slowly we have been um, deauthorizing any um, bonds that um, weren't needed for projects um, or used our best to try to get some alternative funding sources so we didn't have to borrow. Um, so it's gone from um, $979 million um, down to, at the end of FY19, about $760 million. Um, we'll, we're expecting a significant bond sale um, this year. Um, and then we're expecting that in FY 2021, um, we would be down to about $664 million. Question. Uh -huh. um, how much would a deauthorizing a, spe a specific bond, uh, well, so would, would deauthorizing a specific bond allow for authorizing other bonds? So when we de the um, bonds are authorized an amount for a specific project. Yeah. So we have to go to each specific project and find um, an alternative revenue source or um, come up with cost savings within that project cost to deauthorize bonds. Um, and at this point, the spending affordability has been advising and the county is pretty committed to only <coughs> authorizing 90 million of new or around that number each year. So, so theoretically it should continue to decline. So for example, like I'm looking at the tax increment bond. So with, if that was deauthorized, would that make way, would, would that allow for authorizing another kind of bond? No, because the tax increment bonds were specifically for um, specific um, projects and if those projects are not going to continue, um, then those amounts would no longer, we wouldn't, that doesn't mean we'd make up for it in another category, no. Historically, if, if, if you just go back and say, let's just reauthorize everything that's out there, just leave it there, as opposed to looking at it and saying, this bond was for this, are we even going to do that project now, or should we take it off the plate and say, whatever? So that that number, because of all of the things that we talk about, that number there is, scares me a lot as a citizen of the county, right? We were at a billion dollars of authorized yet unissued bonds just a few years ago. I mean, they could just be issued tomorrow, in theory. Mickey, what are the components of when we determine our accessible base? You're looking at what's on the ground and increased value of that new construction in there also? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a number that we get from SDAT that, um, that Holly, you know, we all get the same number um, and it includes everything in the county. When, when, okay. um, and then this is just showing um, what has been authorized um, for geo bonds um, historically, and then actually the actual amounts that were issued in those same years. Mm -hmm. So you can see that um, in 2006 through 2009, around then we weren't issuing, um, we were issuing less than what we were authorizing, and then things started to catch up, and so 
there were some years where we're definitely issuing um, more than was authorized in that specific year. But it was authorized in previous, in previous years. years. Right. So it's not that it wasn't authorized, it wasn't authorized in that year. Right, right. So, so it's just the issue is kind of no one's out there spending not. unauthorized money. It doesn't happen day for day. Right, right. exactly. And like here you can see in 2018, that's when we authorized bonds for the um, for the courthouse. So clearly we, we knew we weren't going to issue them that year. So are we are we still pre-funding and then tranche funding the debt? Like we'll fund the project as it goes and then just do the funding once. Right. So we have um, a line of credit that we yeah. use to um, reimburse ourselves for costs throughout the year, mm -hmm. and then um, once a year, generally, we will pay off that line of credit. With the issuance. Mm -hmm. How large is that line of credit? Um, so right now it's two hundred million. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's up for renewal this year. So we're hoping to get it right. Are there carrying costs for maintaining that line of credit? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is historically been lower cost than what yeah. issuing bonds would have been. So that's yeah. why we continue to use that this rating, methodology. This county with this rating, it just rated pretty well, I would think, mm -hmm. compared to the long term. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is the end of my presentation. If anyone has any other questions. Thank you. So we have we have four charges under the um, county executive's order for um, for our spending affordability advisory committee report. Those are um, projections for general fund revenues for fiscal year 2021, uh, a recommended level of new county debt, uh, general obligation bonds authorization, uh, an analysis of the long-term fiscal outlook with the multi-year projections, um, and then any other findings or recommendations that, that the committee deems uh, appropriate for being added to the, to the report. So for instance, the discussion around uh, additional revenues to maintain service levels at the at the same level whether that be you know uh, other revenue sources fees or potentially tax uh, increases to do that that would be an other finding and or recommendation um, so those are the four the four charges that we have as a committee um, so the first question uh, in front of the committee is for the fiscal 2021 revenue forecast which which Holly has shared, and, and I would say this assumes no changes um, to any um, anything of any of the other recommendations that we may make. Um, does the committee support uh, the, the number of about 3.3 percent, or 38 million dollars, as an increase from fiscal year 2020 to fiscal year 2021? To have that written in the report. I believe probably. Um yeah, I think I think we have typically written that, but yeah. It's just a question. I mean, this is a given, right? It's what you know. It's, it's an it's estimate, and it's a pretty close estimate, right? Because she's looking at this, Holly's looking at this, team's looking at this based on right now, and the year starts in a few months. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's a given, but I would say it's a pretty close. Close estimate because there's been years before where the number shakes out to be lower or higher based on some of the assumptions that were made and the changes that happened um, based on personal income tax. Um, you know, we assume that the personal income tax level, um, our personal income levels are going to be X and they end up being Y. Capital gains could be one of those factors. And so the, the, the receipts are for less. There's also a timing. Yeah, for when we receive those funds from the, from the state, they could hold those back, or things like that. So I would say of all of the recommendations, this is probably the easiest one. Um, yes, Barbara. I just say I'm comfortable with it. It's mm -hmm. it seems like it's within the ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, we never can be precise with that. Mm -hmm. And I agree, it's the easiest one to do. Yeah. 
within the context of what we have available now, what we know, it's, uh, it's, okay. a, it's reasonable. Any, any dissent on that at all? Yep. Just to, to, to clarify, is this in the context of, uh, is, uh, you know, assuming no other changes? Of, um, I guess it, it was discussed. This this was discussed in the in the context of to to uh, fund requested uh, like. Um, Budget request by by department. So is this? Yeah. So this is yeah. just the number. This right? is the this number of what we expect revenues to increase. This is revenue. This Total is revenue. revenue. Yeah, no just, expenses. I mean, Looking at the last. Just just to, just to clarify, right? No, no, that's that's what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. This is just yeah. this is just the if revenue has been fine. increased by three point three percent. This is what it means. This is what it is. That's all. And yeah. it's not prescriptive enough to say this much to here, this much to here, yeah. this much to here. Okay. Um, the next, uh, the next thing relates to the bond authorization recommendation. I just have numbers on here. And, you know, this one I'd like a motion and a second because last year it was kind of we just all looked at each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to get some, some a little more concrete recommendation on on where we are from a bond authorization recommendation. How much did we go over last year from the recommendation in reality? 85 was the recommendation, right? No, so the 70 was Oh, yeah, because I, yeah. I remember. Yeah. I so I'm going to put zero on the table. <laughs> but but how, I guess my question, how can you interpret any zero or anything else? Because I thought Nikki's presentation just they're estimated $90 million. They're, that's just her estimate to show us what the, what the numbers would look like if. Yeah, 90 yeah. million dollars. Yeah. So 90 is basically the, the lowest in the past this decade. So 155 million dollars <laughs> is the sum total of the requests on the table for additional funding for projects, right? So 205. Oh, 205. That was just selected projects. Oh, 205 million. Of course, sorry, I don't want to short ourselves by 50 million dollars. <laughs> can I can I just ask? Um, are there rules about a quorum? Because not everybody here is a voting member. Is it a, is it a, in a it is a vote? It's a vote of the voting members. Does uh, everybody know if they're a voting, voting member or not? Okay. I, don't, I mean, because we've got so many gaps, I just want to make sure. Yeah, and, and what I will do is I actually will probably, because of the number of people who aren't here, we probably should reach out to them as well. So yeah. this would just be, this was the motion. This is a straw vote, too. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. I'm just... At least it'll be more than last. <laughs> Could I still get the clarification? How much over did the county do from our recommendation? Nine. How much was left? Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine point six, I think. Which is that's, that's the final authorization. Ninety was 15. was the authorization. Seventy was the recommendation. Right. I, I know I was the one that was so conservative last year on that seventy, and I, I think I have to stay with that. There is six hundred sixty-three million dollars of other things out there already. Yeah. So we have 70 on the table. Do we have any other? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody want to raise their hand? Because I count the voting members. Okay. Is there not going to be any discussion on it? Apparently, we had a motion in a second. We <laughs> don't vote. He just cut yeah, his just hand just down. Well, that, that, to me, I'm a realist, and I've seen what we what we what, asked, we, say. what we say and what is actually, yep. and also tied to the needs. I I don't see 70 being authorized, and I saw I yeah. But if we said 90, would it be 100? No, I would I would if you asked me where I would go, I would I would I would go into 80, hoping that because I think 90. Given the numbers we saw, that's, that's to me is a stretch. It's really stretching this, but we still going to have whether you call them needs or desires, they're still out there. Yeah. I mean, it's not again. I I don't think it's for. It's not the. We don't get to make the decision, but everything I see on that list says we've got as much as we have an expense problem. Based on the decisions we've already made, we've got a revenue problem too. Oh yes, especially if you look at that right now. Ignore any future decisions. The average debt to a, to a resident is over three thousand dollars. Well, that's on that's on, Yeah, but that's on two thousand nine dollars, right? Both of those metrics were on two thousand nine dollars. I think both of them. I would be curious to see what that would look like if it were on something eight dollars. Yeah. 
as a percentage, I guess, of, of per capita. All right. So I've got the cap on that. That's one. For now. Um, so on the analysis of the long-term fiscal outlook, we've got um, Holly's projections here based on, I, I'm assuming you used uh, information from the, the, the reports that we had last week to, yeah. to, to, to factor in here to yeah. say, looks like long-term growth is in the low 2% range um, after 3.3% after growth that we expect this year. Um, how does everybody feel about about long-term growth projections in that you know that low two percent range? I believe it's more realistic to stay at that level or lower. I don't. I, not, I would not be comfortable with it being raised at all. To have yeah. expectations. Yeah. One of the things that so we've said really in previous years, and I, it's kind of a continued drumbeat, is as we look at the out years. And we look at the long-term growth projections, and this goes a little bit to your comment around services. You know, use numbers like this for that type of uh, analysis, and not not three or four percent growth, and get everybody kind of on the same page. So, do so we have a, a motion on the low two percent range to say, what, what Richard, can you do the math in your head real quick? What's the what's the what would the number be? Low two, I mean, low two percent range. So we have a motion on that. Do we have a second? I would not go above that because if you look at it, there was an article recently said that across in the federal, at the federal level, you're talking about we two percent is, is here for years to come. Yeah. <laughs> GDP growth. Yeah. Personal yeah. income growth. Steve. I mean, the question is, when does wage growth happen? We are in a wage growth less recovery. It could be better, but it could be worse. I mean, the, the, the issue is when does when does the, the inevitable downturn hit, which is what why the downturn is going to is. We don't know when it's going to hit, so prudence is. You see where you want to You were the first. You were the first. No problem. I'll second, second again. All in favor, raise your hand, please. What, what are we on the we're going to put uh, long term growth rate of 2% in the flat 2%? Yeah, just, I'll, 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 I'll calculate it out for you. you you'll, you'll calculate out whatever that average is? Okay. Whatever the average of those numbers are for growth rate in the long term over the next five years. This one averages 2.4%. Yeah. So the, the, the six average is 2.4. Well, we're going to ignore the first year because we just talked about the 22 to 26. Is that 6? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then that's probably already 2. Yeah. 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 That's Barbara, you pushed on this one last year as well. I know. I I just um, I'm not normally a pessimist, but like driving in this morning, they're revising the job growth rate from by 50 million right. jobs from two point something down to one and a half million. Where they started talking about the wage growth, but the, the price of the things that low income people are buying yeah. is growing. I mean, there's just too many things. And when I listen to some of the economists that are saying that we don't have any um, real wiggle room for um, lowering interest rates much, if we get into trouble, I mean, I look at all these factors, and it's hard for me to be optimistic. And, and I still go back to this long run in economic growth. I mean, it's, it's got to bust at some point, and I, I don't get it. I don't, I'm just not getting it at all. Okay. Okay. I am. I, I do like the idea that we don't factor in the 3.3 .3 that we're experiencing. I think that's a reasonable assumption to talk well, I mean, about. Well, I mean, the, the, yeah, the, the, growth the is actual yeah. uh, uh, executive order says 2022 to right. 2026. So. But, I, but I also think we have to make sure that we include um, a context here to look at what that looks like so that we are talking about the fact that we are seeing the prospect of a real decline and then a possible recovery again. So that we're not just talking about being happy that it's going to be two. There are going to be some times when it's going to be below that, and we're going to have to factor that in. So just I so people have their two, heads, not like two point one. I mean, yeah. Maybe well, let's see what the average is. Two point three. The average is two point three for the five years. For the five years. Yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable putting two percent in it. 
just to, to focus everybody's you future. Can always say around 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 two percent. I would say 2%. You can say 2%. Do we have a vote on 2% then? The only problem is that that's that would be entirely eaten by colons. So yeah. I'm not sure that two percent. Yeah, it wouldn't be entirely. Almost. Entirely. Almost. 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 So that, that's the question. It, it, it's, it is what it is. It is yeah, exactly. I mean, so we're talking the difference between point three percent. I mean, so point three percent is. Mm. So one question is when you wrote it, you have to do all that because you say average or like I'm just gonna, I, we have a motion second at two percent. I'm just waiting for people to raise their every hand. Every year or average. Or put another motion on the table. So you wait for a vote now. Yeah. Two percent. Two percent. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll work the language out to, to, to what I'm taking notes of what everybody's saying so we can work the language out or to, work to reflect the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And it's more of in long term yeah, planning that the focus be that. Because we're not seeing anything that would make us think <laughs> Unless other things change. Yes. Right? Related but we're to not revenue. Seeing anything now that makes us feel right? We could, there could be a recommendation to change. Like, I, I think. So now we move into the the other findings and 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 this recommendations that might come from the committee. And I think one of them that came up earlier was um, look at and I know we're looking at you're, you're already doing something. The committee may want to put in here an annual review of fees and things. Yeah. So we're looking at that stuff. That could change these, right? Because we can realize, wow, here's this one fee we're way off on. So I'm going to put that in as one of the recommendations sure. based on some comments. Everybody's good with that. Mm -hmm. What are some other other recommendations that the that the, the committee that everybody here that have been sitting through the past five weeks have some thoughts on um, other recommendations that we would add? One suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, the I, every year the county approves uh, uh, fees in lieu of uh, providing a service. And um, for, I, I guess, for the past, I don't know, 20 years or so, these fees, uh, just based on looking at the cost of providing the actual service, have been low. And that has impacted, uh, I think, uh, these numbers as well. So as a, as a recommendation, uh, just my suggestion would be to recommend that the, the uh, ability or the uh, fees and due be uh, very limited to specific cases. Like forest con conservation fee, for example, was just revised after however many years. Well, shouldn't that uh, be in the overall fee recommendation? That's, that's that all fees, including, including any fees and lieu, be reviewed? Yeah. Yeah. We said no, I, I think that's uh, perhaps perhaps that's the case. But the, the fees that I was referring to, for example, with it, with uh, with BPZ, uh, this is the, the construction. We're talking about all fees, though, not just. One department. It will be part of that recommendation yeah. to stay in it. Yes, it would include. All I mean, I was just saying, from the committee's perspective, we're that recommendation about fees and review is all county fees, not just one department's fees. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, Are we going to take? And I would say in that same in that same section, we can we can mention any fees in lieu and make sure that those have been reviewed and are you know, up to date based on the current costs of the okay. service. That's the part that I wanted to say, yeah. up to date to, cover, to capture the cost of the service provided. Yeah. I mean, that, that gets to the heart of what you're saying, correct? If yeah. they're going to have them, they should be adjusted for whatever yeah. the cost is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Historically, the CIP has unrealistic geo bonds in it. Is that something the committee looks at? Because, you know, we're, we're you, I mean, are proposing. When you say unrealistic? Well, like for 20, FY21, and last year's CIP probably had, I don't know, 120, 150 million dollars proposed. But obviously, that's not realistic. And then the out years might be 180 million. 
So the public seeing a CIP based on projects that never actually happened or they keep getting shunted out. I don't know if that's something the committee it is. In fact, I think the last couple of years the committee talked about more right. realistic right. CIP planning. But has there actually been put in the uh, report? Yeah. The report? Yeah. Yeah. Has yeah, but the report has it been done? No. Sure. So well, I'm sorry. Sorry. can you think about putting it in a report again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. And, and Holly and I have talked about this every single year. When she came on board, it was a lot worse yeah. than it was, and she's been. Mm -hmm. It's been getting better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think reinforcing it is. So reinforcing yeah. the yeah. overall CIP planning. Yeah. 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 One recommendation that was from last year's committee was that the committee be a, a standing committee and not just a once a year committee to have deeper dialogue about different things for, you know, big initiatives for the committee, but that didn't go anywhere. Does everybody want to talk about that again? I think there's been enough questions raised around some of the, the data that it might be worthwhile doing a little bit longer <coughs> rather than sort of the, in the, you know, the mad rush from January to to March, which yeah. I certainly would participate in supporting. Yeah. Because part of it is, you know, there's there's stuff that we just don't understand, and we're raising questions like, well, does this does this model really adequately adequate capture what we're doing? Um, are there more ways of, of squeezing out and saving from a different? Uh, yeah, the state committee is standing. I would I would agree with that, and I don't feel like this year we had um, the same amount of time to discuss because there was so much more data that was given to us that the meetings got tighter and longer so there wasn't the dialogue that we sometimes had in the past. So okay. I was definitely less agree with that. Yeah. Time. More time to do I just I don't like that the compressed yeah. Yeah. six yeah. weeks to yeah. get as much information yeah. in and then you know have you didn't like really that one meeting where we had ten different groups report to us. Yeah. Yeah. So no we didn't ask any questions. No questions. Yeah. No questions. Yeah. So that for me that is you know in the past we've had a little a little bit of time to the other thing Say to you, what is going on? So maybe also um, one suggestion on this is last year's committee suggestion is about more regular meeting. But the other thing is maybe extend it like a start early, like sometime in late fall. At that point, maybe not all the data is available, but some of the concepts are either. And you know, our discussion about it in January, but it's very packed in January. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we have a meeting time for report writing. It's really six weeks. Very condensed on that. <laughs> All right, we'll craft something on that. Um, in, in looking at the county's uh, adequate public uh, uh, the APFO, mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the, last, the last time the road uh, excise tax was changed was uh, a while ago. Uh, and the county also doesn't have any uh, stormwater drainage, health care, police, fire, and solid waste disposal uh, testing for, uh, for the, uh, the ability to provide that kind of infrastructure is not tested uh, in, in the app for ordinance. So in, in, um, perhaps that could be also a recommendation to look at uh, those, uh, those things uh, to ensure that quality of service is being uh, uh, maintained or some sort of a metric is available to to track that. Something around that quality of service versus just the quantity. Mm -hmm. sure. It's not enough to say we, put, we have a police we have a police station. It's whether we're doing we're responding as we expect the police station to do. Suggesting like to clarify like the target at the performance measures, so like whatever investment to keep that performance better. I think I, I think I, I mean based on what what you're saying, I think it would be probably language around um, uh, not just the performance, not just performance measures that we would set, but that we have an understanding of what the impact yeah. will be. I mean. I think we as a committee in previous years, and this committee do something completely different because it's a different um, committee, um, have tried to not make any statements around what would be a decision related to whether or not we should be a county that's developing or not developing and growing, you know, all of those things. It's more about this is what we have 
and what are the things we can look at to continue to do that. Um, I personally, you know, the, we asked for some information a couple years ago on on what the impact of that would, would be. It was only because it was going to have an impact on what out year revenue model would look like. That was the only purpose of it. It wasn't to make a statement on whether it was good or bad. It was just to say, we're using a model that's based on this growth rate. Growth rate's going to change. Model needs to change. Um, so, but I think we can come up with language that would talk more about, regardless of growth, um, and how that growth happens, that we maintain quality of service at whatever level that is for the community, right? Yeah, yeah it, and it's, again, yeah, it, to your point, it's not whether Apple is good or bad. No. It's, it's, it's to the question of why do we have increasing debt burdens and, um, you know, um, if to the extent that, you know, it, we're, we, need to, we need to borrow more to provide services, uh, you know, that's, it's tied to that. And uh, at least from the presentations, a lot of good presentations, I just have not seen that we are tracking these, met these metrics uh, to substantiate, you know, some, uh, you know, that we're providing the same level of service, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Now, I would, I would, one argument I would make is that some of the, some of the things that we're doing is increasing service at the same rate, right? So it's not just maintaining. It's incre we're adding things to, to have a better quality of life in the community, not just have the same quality of life. So, not all of the debt that we're issuing is to maintain. It's to increase as well. I'm just not sure we're increasing either. You know, I just haven't seen that. So one thing that well, if we're going to spend, that's not, that's not that yeah. but We don't have bike paths now. We're going to spend a couple million dollars for bike paths. That's to me, would be an increase. So the general um, performance indicator, the county has a track colored um, uh, what portal. It does include a lot of data. Um, my, my bad. Um, at least I should say that. Yeah. But anyway, there are, um, there are different performance indicators that actually tell, there are outcome measures, there are output measures, so like response rate or a lot of other, you know, recycling rate, etc. That does provide some indicator if you look when you have more data and you can look at the trend to see whether the level for different services, largely stay the same or improving or drop, so both quantitative and qualitative. So that's just, I suggest start from there. It may not cover everything, obviously, but it does give some sense about certain level of service or quality of service. So, okay. based on something Milt said, and I won't cut you if you disagree, <laughs> do we, do we, we're talking about the school surcharge tax coming in in 2020. Right. And he talks about how this is going to add to the debt burden we're passing. We want to make a statement that we want to keep spending at the same level. Do, do we want to diminish this $90 million if that's been the long run or whatever by the revenues, by some fraction of the revenues from school surcharge? Because we're already bumping up against. Why are you laughing at me? Is that a, <laughs> because I, if you hear the reason that why, why the traffic was raised, why elected officials, if I'm not wrong, I mean, hey, Craig, why don't you comment on that? <laughs> Is that purpose what to offset geo bond or to get more bond? It's to increase spending. Did you just, question, did you just say all of them? Do we want to weigh in? Do we want to weigh into this controversy or not? I guess, and, and it's not to be critical of what the intent, what the intent was, but the, the but it's all the impact is is hurting, is is creating a deeper hole for lack of a better term. The intent may be good, but this has unintended consequences. Or there's nothing. Could you clarify uh, what does that mean? What what I'm saying is that we we're we were talking about the the uh, what I call designated uh, increases for our capital and decide what was it schools and fire yeah. and environmental funds and environmental. environmental funds we get excited and and I guess you want applause for seeing that but all it does is create create we don't use it to offset the debt that comes with it that those dollars are used for additional capital, but there's debt tied to that, and that debt is funded out of paying for operating budget. Yeah. Well, so the reverse is 
the reverse is also the case where so over the years that that has not been available and that has led to tapping into other things you know that that should have been a priority and like, what, what you think so, that? so if if you're saying right so if I understand what you're saying correctly um, in the surcharge fees enable for additional uh, bonds, right? Additional bond. debt. No, additional no. debt. No. It could be. Right? Because that's, that's how the county finances it. It's a policy decision. Yeah. Yeah. They could issue yeah. debt and pay the debt service yeah. with that. Yeah. Which is what they search up. So that's not what they're intending to do. I think they're intending just to use it as cash. But it's a policy decision. Right. That's a policy decision. Right. So historically, that's how the county has done it, though, right? Because they've used the surcharge fees to take out debt. We have one point three billion dollars, but debt. primarily yes. Right. But they do right. use it as a payoff as well, right? Not everything is due about that. No, no. That one point three is. Is that one point three everything? No, no, no. That's everything. That's that's everything. No, one point three billion dollars in debt. We yeah. just approved an uh, additional surcharge, and we're going to use that to leverage and do even more debt. Yes. That sounds like that's a, a policy really, decision. That's a, that's that's a great that's policy. That's what's been done. Yeah, that's a great policy decision. Absolutely. If we're already bumping up against the limits, do we want to weigh into this? See, it doesn't necessarily have to be for more debt. It can supply what you were planning. Well, that's right. what you're building the same. No, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you're <laughs> saying that you <laughs> want to <laughs> <have to. laughs> So going around and saying, all right, so you can with you guys with giving me no idea. I don't want to blame them. Hey, you know, I'll give it. I mean, yeah. no. <laughs> See, you didn't want it. Because. Yes, I, I more than willing to put something in the report to say that we, before we go and leverage even more, we should be focusing on all of the factors of our affordability to be able to do something. Holly, correct me, was there, wasn't that whether it was last year or what we showed up there, isn't there a year coming up soon when our debt payment is greater than our projected revenues for a particular fiscal year? No, it's when we go over the 10%. But it exceeds our... Uh, but outstanding debt. Our outstanding, outstanding debt, I think, was... was I remember people telling me, I think her first presentation about me is outstanding debt exceeded. Yeah, it was debt. over a billion. Mm -hmm. It's over a billion. I mean, I go back to what Steve said, and there's a lot of things, but sitting here as, as a resident, and what a, our debt is what scares me. I, but scared, so the debt scares me, but the part that scares me about the debt is what we were talking about earlier is a lot of the debt that we're, we're funding is to build schools and we're not even looking at the operating impact that that's going to have. Exactly. Millions and yeah. millions and millions of dollars to open schools. And I remember, I, I think it was four or five, six years ago when Steve was here and he said, you know, he was on, he was on spending affordability when, when the whole discussion was coming up. I mean, that, this was decades ago about lowering school class sizes. And, and and at that time had no understanding when they made that decision. To your point, they didn't have the data to say, well, when you do that and you have this growth, this is what the impact's going to be over here. So yes, you're going to get metrics that you want to have for um, students and, and, and everything associated with, with them, test scores, grades, all that stuff, great. But that impact has a dollar amount to it. And we're, we're now reaping the impact of decisions from 30 years ago on, on the numbers that we're seeing here. You know, another thing that, I don't know if it was a slide that you presented seven years ago, but one that stuck with me was just the evolution of a new community. And, and when the, our peak of development was happening and how we invested, and now that those investments are moving to 40 and 50 years old, so that you've got this collision of both what an evolution of a new city looks like as as well I mean and that impacts the entire county as well as on a tapering off of development there's not that much land left right. so that we've got a collision of aging infrastructure a changing development picture and the evolution of the community those all of these things are and it makes it a very kind of complicated there's not one to look at. there's not one cause yeah. Right. It's a sure. multiple cause, but but the easy answer in our community seems to be to develop to blame developers. I mean, that's kind of like without looking at the whole. To me, that just that aging piece 
when that, I wish I could find that bar graph. I looked for it this morning. And do you recall that? I think I don't think it was mine. But well, then it. maybe it's Jeff's because he was pointing to maybe the permit. Well, Jeff's taking his yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> but but I remember. I mean, I, I, remember I remember too, that yeah. was like to me should have been like we should have it every year to look. I looked at for my own presentation. Yeah, it's been I would have said like eighteen. But it was. All right. So was every, would everybody support putting in some language around? And it would. I think it would. Like it could. Factors. It could be in that whole quality of service and maintaining section to talk about not only mm -hmm. what where we need to increase other things to make sure that we're maintaining the service, but also to say as we bring on these other additional revenue sources that we look to be prudent about how we spend them as opposed to continuing to leverage. Well, I think I think part of it is again to look at the operating impact of capital spending. Yes. And so. Um, one of the things that, and, and it's it's simply an advisory thing that these this is the context within which we should be looking at things. We can't look at things. I mean, my favorite thing when people say thinking outside the box is that there is no box. Nothing exists in a box. Everything is in a web. It's connected to things on the outcome and on the input side. And if you're not looking at that complete picture, we're not going to move forward with a rational analysis of where we're going. So I think if we put something in there in the same way we're looking at fees, we have to look at what the true impact of um, capital expenditures are on the operating budget and on outgoing out the years and stuff. So I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to put in and say that we need to be looking at We need more context. We need more context. And as you spoke, as we are now a community in renewal and re, you know, what does that look like if we're going to continue to maintain services the in, in, older, in older communities in order to bring them up? To the, to the service level that they need. So I think that's a community, community, community in one. Huh? You said community in one? In renewal. Community in renewal. renewal. Yeah. That's a good positive way of saying it. Yeah. 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 One, one thing I want to make sure when we're talking about looking at fees across departments is exceptions to fees. One thing that's stuck with me that in the police department presentation about uh, paying for special events was that A, was eating up a bigger and bigger chunk of their budget, but um, they, they would charge a fee to some organizations, but not to others for, for covering events. So I want to make sure that's captured. Yeah, and, and some of the discussion around that is, you know, if, if there are exceptions, what are they right. and why are they? Right, yes. right. I think the big one that they mentioned was Mary one. I, I have no idea what the history is with that, but to me, it's like, wow, that's a huge. But again, it, it's again determining what is what is the service that is due based on the fact that they pay entertainment tax, and that's built around certain things. Right. So, so I, I do think it's, it's good for people picture. to understand. Again, no box. Okay, these things. So, and if it's a nonprofit conducting something versus a for right, profit, exactly. so, so that was part of the consideration exactly. before. And it's not a bad thing to reinforce that that there are things that are due to you as a service provider within the community in right. terms of police protection and, and keeping things safe around, you know, but, yeah, but reminding that there's a range yeah. and we need to know what those considerations are. Um, so I um, just I want to shift just a little bit. Uh, Larry mentioned last week about uh, the, the availability of uh, uh, land uh, that's business that's a uh, zoned business mm -hmm. and uh, um, I, I, I recall that a lot of land was rezoned to residential a few years ago uh, that, that perhaps has had an impact on on the availability of land for businesses uh, perhaps a recommendation would be to revisit some of those decisions so that you know, more than 18% of the revenue, the county's revenue, could rely on, um, could, could could come from uh, from these business uh, business developments. And so Are you uh, talking about the general plan? Uh, I, I, I think that's what we were talking about, like, yeah. you know, zoning. When we rezoned yeah. Plumbia, yeah. yeah. I think zoning is part of the master plan, but I would, I would add to that, I mean, Suggesting in here that you know, because there's always a, a recommendation or a comment about you know growing a commercial base. Um, but I think you know, uh, uh, kind of resetting the expectations about what that means because um, you know the the, repu the reputation of Howard County is becoming a more and more difficult place to 
to do business. Um, and this kind of weighs into the policy side of things, but I think consideration has to be, you know, at least a, a statement about, you know, um, you know, be, be careful about those kinds of policies because it does have an impact on your expectations about growing that commercial base. So it's basically a statement around understanding what we can do to accelerate the growth of the commercial base, whether that be zoning or other types of initiatives. Yeah. At least readdressing or the opportunity to reassess the allocation between. I mean, there are, that's it. Well, isn't it a county mandate to do a general plan every 10 years? It's, 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 it's already in place. It's starting, starting this year. Yeah. yeah, so it's already in place to do it. It's just yeah. recommending that we don't lose sight of the commercial base and our want to grow that. Yeah. And Typically comes with less services. So perhaps we're assessing those decisions in the general plan coming up. And you know, other legislative things that you know may encourage and that kind of development. I mean, you can raise fees all you want, but based on what I saw in the debt data, you know, uh, you're not, you're not going to get the fees because nobody's building anything. So it's yeah. something about that consideration you can't necessarily rely on. Well, when you were talking about renewal, I want to take it to a different place for a moment, which is that, for example, from the school system's perspective, renewal is deferred maintenance. That's my half a billion oh, dollar number. I totally so agree. that's part of our challenge when we're because we're talking about the capital side. So I got that. The other issue I have is that I don't have enough capacity for the students. And the only way I have capacity right now is because I have relocatable classrooms, which people don't like for a multitude of reasons. So what I'm saying is that it becomes a societal or a culture shift as to what our expectations were at this point in time and where we are now. Because we're talking about, like, I'll use the Merriweather example. Okay, well, we'll just provide services because, you know, we made decisions or decisions were made at a point where there were different economic times. And I think that for society, and I've seen it here in Howard County, it takes us a while to change and shift our thinking about the way that we used to do things and then the way we may have to do things new. And I think sometimes we are behind the, the able, we are behind in our thinking as opposed to planning for what's coming down the road. And I think we're beginning to see the perfect storm with different things because you know, we're talking, okay, well, we're not, we don't have enough, enough land for development, yet I still have kids coming. You know what I'm saying? If we don't have enough land for development, we're not going to get this fee, which won't do that, but our other costs keep increasing. You know, and, and our I think lines that, are divergent. I think a little bit of that shift is happening. A few years ago, you heard every time you turned around, if you can't do it in Howard County, where can you do it? And I'm not hearing that yeah, so much anymore. I, well, I would say I've got a couple of heads nodding over here. I mean, you used to see it in the letters to the editor or wherever, but it's, but it's, it's changing. Not enough, um, Christina, but I hear exactly what you're saying. It is a culture shift and it is a changing of, of expectations. And as far as the covered services, like for example, with the, um, the discussion about how it's just to, like I'll use Merriweather, that, that the funds collected are to just cover a cost of providing services. But I think the challenge is people see that and they're making they're making an assumption of that it's going for more than that. I think we have to be more specific as to that when fees are collected, how fees are used. Because some, depending on a person's mindset, they, they're thinking of it as more of a tax, so to speak, to pay for other things right. as opposed to just for, that it is dedicated to one use, and I think understanding the dedication helps give a much clearer picture of how the county is collecting and utilizing funds. But taxes require a nexus, whereas fees don't always. So that's one of the things to look for. I, I was just thinking of something you were talking about, recommendations. We deal with one, the county deals with one fiscal year at a time far, but I see the county in a period of transition, and all the data shows us that, and so, the recommendation would be we need to continue focusing on those projections. So long-term planning. Long-term planning, because the county is truly going through, I think, a transition. Now someone asked me how to define that. You just look at all the numbers we're talking about, the demographics, the revenue sources, 
our, our expected increases in uh, new, new, new income, new revenue. All that reflects to me a transition that the county needs to continue focusing on because the past is the past. It's not going to be there. And we've been trying to send that message. What we've always <laughs> done. Um, I think the uh, one, one, one additional suggestion that I would have, um, and I've heard it being discussed here, uh, and I get the impression that it's a budgeting assumption, and perhaps it has been a budgeting assumption. Um, I, I heard this claim, I think the first time it was in 2004, was written that uh, residential, new residential development pays for itself. Um, and I think I would suggest that this, um, this perhaps budgeting assumption be revised. It's not a knock against residential development or anything. It's just as to, to look at the picture and say, you know, to perhaps revise this assumption, and that way we are able to account for, you know, what's what's driving the cost, um, and um, account for revenues properly account for the cost properly and I in in my opinion just based on what I've seen this assumption has led to this increased burden in debt and other costs um, and if we can add this to the recommend I would I would recommend that we add it to the to the additional recommendations so, so okay what is budget assumption? We haven't, uh, we haven't really, we haven't made any conclusion of whether new residents will pay for itself. All we did is based on what the committee recommended years ago when we do the projection and we hire um, the competitive bidding, have consultants to look into that there. So we are not making any uh, policy decision. I mean, when I develop budget, we're not making making that statement. But the other thing is, I think what you say is great, like worth more look into that, the whole new development things on that. But that's why um, I sent an email, I don't know whether everybody got it yesterday, um, that we set up a separate, uh, like a voluntary meeting next uh, Wednesday. Well, the first hour next Wednesday before we start. Uh, 9 to 10 o'clock. Oh, no, the last hour, 9 to 10 o'clock on the 12th of that. And we actually, because um, somebody brought it, Email me some questions really that I pulled out. So, so we reach out to the consultant there. So, like the consultant is willing to come from Virginia and be able to sit down and talk about the technical stuff. Because a lot of it appears to be technical stuff to help better understanding, have a, a, a good discussion. So, I think that will be a really good discussion on that there. But so, I think, there's but, a but from a recommendation that, standpoint, I think, I think, really, I think, no, no, no. I think, so. I think there's a recommendation in there, and I, I think the recommendation is. is it goes into that long-term planning piece that, mm -hmm. that Milton said. You can craft some language in there and say that, you know, when you're looking at long-term planning, don't don't make, don't, look, don't make the assumptions of what the past was, right? Yeah. Let's look at what our impacts are on a, on a go-for basis and what we've seen. Because I think it's a little bit of, I think what uh, Christina and uh, Barbara were saying is, you know, we've got $500 million of deferred maintenance that's hitting us at the same time that new development is. So it can look like it's all of this other stuff, but it could be, aging roads and you know other things because we haven't taken care of them and we haven't done other things that we should have done over time. Um, that's or one of the reasons I remember going through the P3 yeah. discussion. We know, how to, we know how to construct buildings, maybe do a better job of taking care of them than they last a long time. So it was, I mean, and I'm not saying something that, that wasn't said at that table in that, in that context a couple of years ago. So I think we can craft something in there that, that gets to that point. But anybody who wants to come next week at 9 o'clock and, and listen to this um, presentation, I think there's going to be some other data too for that. So that could be helpful. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that it's just the 9 to 10, and yeah. we're not that, like we're not utilizing that snow date time. That we no, we're going to use now. the eight. So it's just that one hour in the morning. Seven, and then the we're going to use the 7 to 9 to start the work on the, a small group start report. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay. And then at 9, we'll stop, and then people can come in, and we can start working on the bigger ones. Yes. Since we're talking about meetings and times, there's a conference call scheduled for next week on my schedule. What is that? An evening An evening conference call? There's, there's nothing next week. That's yes, the week after. The, the week when, 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 yeah. 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 On the, <laughs> the, the, on the 19th is the date for review of draft of report. Yeah, so we're going to work, the small group's going to work on the 12th, and I'm going to invite people to join me on the 15th. 
so that we can present a draft report for a conference call with the committee on the 19th. The okay, so okay, so the 12th is the, the right. 19th is the meeting. Yeah, the 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 26 or something. Uh, the 19th is the meeting. Okay, sorry. Okay, 26th. So the 8th and 9th o'clock hour next Wednesday is for the small committee. 9, 10 is the consultant. Yes. Yep. 15th society, you're going to meet the consultant. The small committee. Small committee. And then we're back in the 19th. Yes, 19 is uh, the only thing we need to make sure that people remember is that on the 19th, it's a regular um, committee meeting to discuss a draft report, but it's at night. That's it's at evening. It's evening. It's and then any of those drafts, that any comments that come out of that meeting, we'll go back and make some changes, and then we'll call and vote on the final report on a conference call on the 26th. 26th uh, is also at night. That was a but it's call a if needed. Well, I think we have some good recommendations. Is there anything else? from the group. Very good. I think we can give everybody their time back. No, Craig, I said, is there anything else? All right, all right, all right. Say okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's left. They're gone. <laughs> so you brought up Meriwether. And um, so just to let you know, we're kicking off a police overtime. It's a follow-up from the one we had two or three years ago where we right. recommended that we start assessing. Uh, but of course, Mary Weather is exempt right now, and we're going to be recommending support alert for the administration once again that we start assessing Mary so Weather. Exception. Right. So we're going to be recommending that. So I don't know if you guys have to. I think we're going to talk about in the fees about going back to your comment. Okay. Any exceptions that we've had, we, that's the past that we need to look at. All right. I mean, the last thing we want to do is raise. I mean, this is my opinion. I would rather not raise five or six or seven cents in property tax because we have an exception over here that we shouldn't have anymore. Because right. that, that property tax increase is going to significantly hurt our our most vulnerable population. Are you suggesting pulling Meriwether out specifically in our recommendations? Well, they're the only ones that aren't being said, um, yeah. assessed police over time. We, yeah. we, yeah, we've put them in there before. Okay. Right. I, I would support. Yeah. I mean, it's a use of it as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah. It could be passed down. Your argument is the they do pay the taxes, right? Yeah. Well, they pay a. I'm just saying that's right. their argument. That's their argument. That's the argument you're making, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I think everybody can have the rest of the morning back, and we'll get working on uh, putting this draft together. Thanks, everybody. It's a great time. Thank you. Thank you.